So I have some, some notes and I will ask for time as I can't see a clock and I very, very uh, nobly switch my phone off. So it's not mine that's ringing. Right, here we are. Um, so good afternoon and um, thank you for the invitation to speak here today. My name is Timmy Arnell and I work for the Forest Commission, uh, specifically the bit of the Forest Commission known as Forest Enterprise England which is responsible for the public forest estate, i.e. your forest managed on your behalf by um, for, um, Forest Enterprise England. At one time I did cover the whole of Great Britain and it's a strange act of completing a circle because my first IFA on forestry business was in Glasgow, the second one was in Bangor, North Wales, so it's the, the uh, circle and the three car trick have been landed uh, today here in Brighton, so England Scotland and Wales. Um, my colleague Matt Ritchie performs a similar role to me in um, Scotland and um, forestry matters are now covered by Natural Resources Wales in Wales, if any of you were thinking about that. Right, um, what did we do with those shapes? This is where the first, we find out how remote it is. Oh, that's the pointer of it. It's what? That's the question. What do we do with those shapes? Right, the question in the title arose from comments made by a colleague who was responsible for an area, so can you see that? Shall I? Yeah. Um, an area of wooded land, you've got to imagine that's got forest across the top of it. And, it, and he was talking to um, an enthusiastic um, archeologist, no names mentioned, but is standing before you. Uh, who, had, who was trying to introduce the terrain models of secondary term uh, uh, LIDAR data to his colleagues as something that's going to make their lives easier. Um, so, and his question was, what do we do with those shapes? And at that point, um, it did strike me that we're talking about collaborative approaches in challenging landscapes, and woodland is pretty challenging for a variety of reasons. And the first thing that we as archaeologists often have to remember is that there are usually many players with different objectives operating in the landscapes that um, we um, ourselves are looking at. And this is ideally illustrated in many ways by the public forest estate in, 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 in uh, England. Oops. Uh, back. Sorry, I can't. I mean... I now have to move to go to previous, because I can't read it from over there. <laughs> right. Okay. So, Forest Estate is 252, or, or with a quarter of a million hectares, the Forest Enterprise is responsible for a little under 20% of the woods and forests in England. This is looked after for people to enjoy, wildlife to flourish, and business to grow. It's a place for many things, including, uh, including nature and heritage. There are over six million visitors to the key promoted hubs across the state and in excess of 200 million visits as well. So that's a lot of people going to a lot of places. Now, the heritage, I'll actually return to the, the, the slide, but. The heritage assets of the estate are extensive in number and date range. Um, the soundbite I preferred was we have stuff from the Neanderthal to the nuclear age, but uh, someone who knows a lot more about deeper prehistory than me pointed out that um, we have things much earlier than the Neanderthal, so we're going to Paleolithic to uh, nuclear age uh, is what we're talking about. We have sections of Grimsditch, Wands Dyke, Offers Dyke, and several kilometres of Warren Banks are also in our care. Um, and linear earthworks are some of the most challenging things you have to cope with across um, uh, in a, um, um, a landscape. Um, we have a fair share, but there's a later paper to uh, look at this um, on, on Offers Dyke. However, um, significance is a challenge not as a whole, we know what they represent, but the significance of the small sections where somebody wants to do something, sort of bigging that up when they're saying, well, you've got 
X number of kilometers, which look pretty the same to me. Um, that's that. Okay, the acronyms that are on the slide. Uh, hopefully, in a world of professionals like this, you can read them all off and you know what they are. Um, so area, site for special scientific interest, SAC, Central Monument, SAC is a special area of conservation. RPG is in this context, um, registered park and garden. If you're going to hear Richard Osgood later on Defence of State, it may mean something else. Um, AW Ancient Woodland and Paws Plantation on Ancient Woodland Sites. Now, I've reeled them off, but they are part and parcel of what's reeling around in many land managers' heads. They have got to deal with things under all those things, often in the same place on the ground. So it often has to, you have to synthesize with other, uh, or synthesis, or synthesize with other objectives. The acronym can dictate what happens. So a barrow, just as an example, a, a round barrow with a 1970s softwood productive what some people call productive woodland on it may be treated one way that might differ from the same monument but which or a similar monument which has a veteran oak tree on top of it but is situated in an ancient woodland which might differ from one which is in a registered park and garden but with a clump on it as part of an eye catcher which may also uh, differ um, from you know, uh, other, others that are, that are lying around. So I've just sketched three scenarios for one thing where you might have to take a different approach. Removing trees from a Heathland SSSI, SSSIs, big thing, is also a, uh, a, a challenge sometimes. If done well, i.e. no destumping, it can be extremely beneficial. So we have to sit, you know, as I've said, look at other people's objectives, make sure they uh, are aware of ours, but we have to be careful that we, we don't engage in a, um, a sort of conservation game of top trumps, uh, which in some areas can be quite challenging. We have to bring all the cards to the table and try and make a good hand out of it for everybody, if at all possible. Um, we should, of course, I've talked about a single site, but we should, of course, never overlook the trees and particularly the forests themselves. Um, places like the New Forest and the Forest of Dean are particularly important and iconic in language, literature, place. So we have to bear that in mind as well. well no, no, go for it. And this is just to refresh everybody's mind. Uh, we do have visitors doing various things which are good. Uh, um, that actually is a, a, a trail that has been checked for the archaeology in the mountain bike. There are other sorts of things that do happen but um, we try and uh, cater for lots of people uh, and doing different things. But we do have the visitors. But most importantly, because uh, it's pretty crucial in running a business and uh, keeping going, is the, um, the estate is expected to harvest over 1.3 million cubic meters of timber a year. And believe me, that is a lot. Um, so that, is happening all the time. So we can have a great image of the forest where people go and enjoy themselves, uh, go to concerts, walk, ride, see nature, appreciate everything. But behind all that, there is a business uh, that has to, or uh, uh, harvesting operations that have to keep on going. The opening question, what do I do with these shapes, does of course have a subset of questions. They are, what people want to know that are doing things on the land is, where is it? What is it, and what can I do with it? That's the three things uh, we need to know. That is the challenge. So, why is it a challenge? Well, it starts with, of course, um, we know that prehistoric man left few, if any, woods that we can see today in the landscape. I know that's a whole argument, a big discussion, but it's not, it's not for here. However, the challenge of working in the landscape is that explaining woodland loss over time is sometimes difficult. Um, even in you know, the paper every day, you can pick up something about it's a barren, empty landscape, nothing's ever happened, it needs more trees. Well, some have explained to people that the landscape in many places has been 
empty for 1,000 years, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. It's, op it's often difficult to comprehend without explanation and good evidence, um, uh, particularly in areas like some of our upland national parks, uh, where there's fantastic, and I'm sure we're going to hear more, more about that later in re relation to the Dales. Okay, so um, archaeologists, of course, have always known there's going to be um, um, archaeology somewhere, and we've got the shorthand of in the woods, uh, archaeology that's in the woods, and archaeology of the woods. Uh, uh, but we've covered that on many, many times, so we're not going to do that there. But often finding it is the challenge. Um, Five minutes. Right, surveying woodland, of course, can be extremely difficult. Um, but work such as uh, done in Mitchell Deaver in the 70s, as um, uh, did enlighteners, but woodlands did, of course, become a place for surveying where we thought there might be dragons. So here is about finding the dragons, and over uh, recent years, uh, We've made great use of my colleagues in forest research have engaged with a number of projects, some tactical for the Forestry Commission, uh, some with partnerships with others using LIDAR uh, survey. And that produces interesting images, which will be very difficult to see, but you'll be able to see them later on, on the uh, broadcast. Um, so that is, uh, I'll talk, we'll talk about that. I must credit my colleague Peter Crow, who works for Forest Research, for doing a lot of this stuff, and do strongly recommend reading The Light Fantastic in whatever version it is now, uh, produced by um, Historic England with a chapter on woodland uh, in it by, by, by Peter. All of these things have produced results. That uh, was the original, um, um, I'm sure you've all, uh, hello. Uh, have seen that, that's the, the Welshbury site and you, you, you remove and you get excellent things. But that was a great thing, there's always a buzz of excitement about when you see LIDAR opening the door. But having the images is just the start and we want more to understand the significance. We're quite keen on more validation projects which are great and research which has flown, uh, flown uh, has come out of this, often involving community projects but with excavation and also universities being involved. The questions, research questions, can exist uh, uh, alongside um, management and must be there if we're going to assist in explaining the significance of what we're dealing with. It is important that we researchers encourage to continue after the buzz of big projects dies down. So, returning to my Forrester, this, um, I'll move towards the screen at the moment, this is a first return, we know there are bits in woodlands, if you watch this site not far away from here, that's the scheduled monument, that's the woodland cover. So pity the poor Forrester who gets told, oh we've done some more LIDAR work over your forest, this is what's there. Uh, now how we deal with that is going to be um, a challenge, but what we do is make sure that everyone is aware of that and then we have to look at sites, drop the site, you've just got to think of it as a place where things happen and where we can all work together to increase the understanding. So, you remember the question, what do we do with those shapes? The answer is, I tell my colleagues, you've just got to remember the cue. At which point they say what? And you say, our role, particularly you as operational staff with the machines and doing the planning, we are there to conserve as much of the evidence as is possible and correct to do so. We work with others, even though we have some, many of my colleagues have, are deeply knowledgeable on, on, on subjects, but we do make sure we've got a full picture by working with others to understand what it is. Because without the understanding, you're really just guessing and you know, sticking your finger in the wind and stuff. But most and most importantly, it is crucial that we enjoy what we're doing. And so then what we have conserved for the future is there to be understood and enjoyed by the many millions of visits that do, uh, that do visit our public forest estate with its magnificent heritage from at least the Neanderthal through to the New Fury Age. Thank you very much. <laughs>